Hi folks, welcome back to Green Iron TV. Today we're going to be doing some more work on the 1967 M725 ambulance. Mainly doing a lot of work on the fuel tank. Uh, we had to clear out the fuel pickup line, which involved us cutting the top of the tank, taking the fuel pickup line out, getting it cleared, getting that welded back in and sealed. Uh, we've also put in the new fuel uh, sending unit here so we can uh, get a good reading on it. We've sanded, primed, painted the whole tank including redoing the straps and all that. So fuel tank is now all ready to go. And uh, after we get the truck painted here, we're gonna go ahead and get that uh, tank back up and in the truck and ready to roll. So stay tuned. And here we are shining a light into the tank. This is to help show all the little pinholes around the welds that need to be filled in. And after that, grinding the welds down to find more pinholes. Imagine that. And then start the whole process over again. We did this three or four different times trying to get all the little pinholes filled in. Next I took the DA sander with a heavy grit to the tank stripping off all the old paint and crud. Preparing the metal for new primer and paint. Well, folks, after welding, grinding, filling in pinholes, welding, grinding, <laughs> filling in pinholes, we've got to the point where I got it pretty decent up top. Uh, I've now put a ring of JB weld around it just to seal all those final little pinholes because we do know that no matter how good this gets welded, there's always going to be some little pinholes. So we'll use that as a good final sealer. Uh, we'll let that harden up and so forth like that. Uh, as you see, we've sanded down most of the tank here, and then we'll uh, go ahead and put this thing in some primer, put some paint on it, and uh, it'll be ready to stick back up in the truck, and uh, then we'll be able to fill it and uh, make sure that uh, we got everything functioning just proper on it. So, As you can see as we're up close here, so we do have that coat of JB Weld going all the way around the bead seal there and that's gonna should do the job of sealing it shouldn't be too terribly critical because this is the top of the tank and uh, you know fuel won't be riding up there at the top like this so uh, should all in all uh, turn out pretty decent and we should have a good functioning fuel tank by the end of all this All right, after quite a bit of work today, we've got it welded, sealed up, primed, and painted black. So uh, once the paint's fully dry here, we will uh, go ahead and stick her back in the ambulance, get it all hooked up and get it all plumbed up and have a functioning gas tank again. And here we have the old fuel gauge sending unit and the new one that we picked up from Memphis Equipment along with a few other things. I'm pretty sure this is one of the reasons why the fuel gauge didn't work properly. Uh, this, this unit here has uh, seen its day. So we will gladly send that on the way. 
and put this new shiny unit that works nice and good from Memphis in this truck and have a good working fuel gauge. And all buttoned up and ready to go back in the truck when it's time. Alrighty, one of the things with this ambulance is the driver's door doesn't shut really tight and so forth like that. So adjusting the striker plate and so forth like that didn't have enough adjustment left to it and so forth like that. So what we're going to do, we're going to grind open the, the holes a little bit, give us a little more room to slide it over and so forth like that. And hopefully that will tighten up the uh, door seal here on the driver's side. We'll see if that little bit helped. Well, that tightened it up some, but as you can see, we still got just a little bit of play in it. So we're going to grind it some more and uh, see if we can get that to tighten up even a little more. Okay, now we've notched that out which has allowed that striker plate to go a little farther in and uh, now the door should shut nice and tight. And as we can see we have just very little wiggle room in it. Gets the door nice tight and flush. So call that one a success. Prepping the body for paint, I have run the DA sander with a 180 grit over the entire body. I started on the roof and worked my way down and around, trying to make sure I got all the old rough oxidized paint smooth and prepared for a new coat of paint. There's an awful lot of body to sand on one of these big ambulances, but luckily through all of this, it's all flat panels and fairly easy to work with. So all in all, it's not going to be too terrible of a job to get it all sanded and prepped and ready. While sanding on the front bumper, I was able to find a few old markings, but I'm not quite sure if they are original or were added by the previous owner at some point. It appears to read 
uh, 47th medical and uh, six or something and then HQ 9-3 So one of the things I know I'm going to hear about from a lot of you guys is the fact that we're not stripping this entire vehicle back down to bare metal. Um, there's a pretty good reason for that. The fact is, this has got a really good solid base coat of paint. So it's not flaking, it's not cracking, and so forth like that. So basically what we've done is take the oxidation off it and smooth it out and so forth like that. And of course, yeah, we did have to take it to some bare metal in some spots here when we were taking the crosses and stuff off. Um, but other than that, the paint's in really good shape, so we're going to use it as a good base coat and as a prime coat, and uh, it should uh, give us a good finish. Now you got to remember too, this is a motor pool restoration. This is not a factory restoration uh, like you'd see on a 55 Chevy or 69 Camaro. All right, this is a 60s military vehicle. Very utilitarian, very Spartan, and so forth like that. These things were never perfect from the factory. So to restore it back to perfect is a bit absurd for these. So what we want to do is we want to make it look really, really good and look like it was actually in service with the U.S. military. So that means it's going to have a few blems in the paint. It may have a run or a streak here. It'll have a ding or a scratch. And guess what? That's going to be perfectly acceptable for the type of restoration that this vehicle is going to see and so forth like that so before you guys go off the hangar about not stripping and fully disassembling the vehicle for restoration gotta keep in mind this is a military restoration it is not a classic car restoration so thanks for watching keep joining in uh, subscribe like follow leave comments we love to hear it all from you every little bit helps thanks guys have a good evening